Misty Strahan for sharing those photos with us. Jamie, all kinds of lightning and thunder woke me up today, but thankfully no egg-sized hail this morning. Not, not at my house. Yeah, you would have heard that too. Uh, lots of rain. There was some, I think, probably small hail at least here in the Springfield area. Um, certainly some larger hail in pockets in our area. And we had that story off the top of the show out of Marble Hill, Missouri. This over in southeast Missouri near the Cape Girardeau area. Uh, the Paducah National Weather Service has been out uh, surveying the damage. Their preliminary findings are that it was a high-end EF2 tornado with 130 mile per hour winds. And it was that kind of tornado risk that we were worried about going into the night last night and into the morning today. Now, thankfully, locally in our area, uh, even though there were a bunch of tornado warnings to start the day, including with that storm that produced that excise hail, uh, we did not see much in the way of significant damage. Now, there were quite a few reports of hail locally down to the south where we did have a few tornado warn storms. There is some evidence that maybe there was a weak tornado in the Berryville area. The Tulsa National Weather Service uh, said that they were kind of en route today to go check out that damage uh, uh, to see whether or not that indeed was a tornado. But uh, it looks like we got through this severe weather event with relatively minimal harm locally in our area, but certainly over in southeast Missouri, it's a different story. Now, as we take a look at what's going on right now, we find that the severe weather threat continues, but further east, and it stretches all the way from the Great Lakes down to the state of Louisiana. We've got a, a line of thunderstorms which continues to barrel off to the east and southeast. Here's our cold front. It's cleared our area, and speaking of cleared, we've seen the cloud cover move out. Beautiful late afternoon across most of the area, but with those clear skies, and that cold air coming in overnight tonight, we're setting the stage for some frost near freezing temperatures too. Uh, looks like we've got uh, the risk of patchy frost in a lot of the area with readings in the mid 30s by tomorrow morning. Uh, the greatest concern to the north. This is where we have a frost advisory in effect for communities like Osceola East across Camdenton. Uh, looking at our forecast for tonight, uh, a quiet night. We're going to be able to rest easy. It looks like for tomorrow. We'll find some high cloudiness throughout the day, but generally a, a nice day, a little cool. We go into tomorrow night, very similar conditions, mostly clear skies. Uh, looks like temperatures, uh, they're going to fall back off into the 30s as we work uh, into the morning hours on Friday. And then for Friday itself, uh, we're going to find another day with mostly sunny conditions. There will be a fair amount in the way of high cloudiness across the area. Uh, temperatures tonight dropping down about 34 in Springfield with a high tomorrow, close to 60. We're back down in the mid 30s Friday morning and then we're back up into the 60s Friday afternoon with highs generally in the low to mid 60s across here. It looks like about 64 in Springfield. Looking at this upcoming Easter weekend, I don't know that you could ask for nicer weather. Uh, looks like it'll be close to 70 on Saturday, bright. Easter Sunday also looks now mostly sunny with highs in the uh, upper 60s to possibly middle 70s. Looks like around 72 here in the Springfield area. Beyond this weekend, the pattern stays nice and it stays fairly quiet. There will be a shower risk, I think, uh, come Monday in our area. 73 for high, though. Looks like a dry day on Tuesday with mostly sunny skies, 77 and sunshine, and up near 80 Wednesday of next week. Steve? All right, Jamie. House Speaker.